This video contains excerpts from our playbook. Download it from our website. Welcome to our whiteboard drawing. Jump to 9.1.2 or higher, cut over. This drawing describes the cut over. Let's start with a quick overview and review. This is an overview of the jump upgrade and virtualization. This drawing looks at the final step, cut over. Here are the tasks for a jump to 9.1.2 virtualization and upgrade. On day two, a figurative day, we virtualize and upgrade our CUCM cluster. Here are some considerations for the production cluster change freeze. Shut down builds cluster, inventory registered devices, shut down production cluster, promote pre-production cluster to production, inventory registered devices and test, make the go no go decision, and run ELM migration utility. This is an overview of the jump lab. This drawing looks at activities on the production and pre-production clusters. In this drawing, we look at cutover. First, we'll inventory registered devices. We can do that outside of the maintenance window. Then, with the maintenance window open, we'll shut down the production cluster in an orderly fashion in case we need to fail back. We promote the pre-production cluster to production by changing the VNet configuration for the pre-production VMs to Production Collab A and Production Collab B. Once we've promoted the pre-production cluster to production, We'll inventory registered devices to ensure everything registers and we'll do some tests. If everything looks good, we'll go with the new software. Otherwise, we'll roll back to the current production software. First, we will shut down the builds cluster. The builds cluster should be shut down before promoting the pre-production cluster. We don't want the builds VMs running on the same servers as our production VMs, at least not during cutover. This can be done before you open the maintenance window. We'll inventory registered devices before the cutover, so we can compare with the results after cutover and see if any devices don't re-register. Enterprise 20 inventories registered devices before and after cutover to make the go-no-go no go decision. Use RTMT to get the total number of registered devices. Use RTMT to get the number of registered devices of each type. Use phone find to look at devices in specific device pools. In some cases, it's easier to look at unregistered devices. RTMT can be used to find the number of registered devices of a particular type. In RTMT, navigate to Call Manager, Device, Device Search, Open Device Search, Phone. Select the Registered Radio button and any Call Manager. Then click Next. Select the Radio button beside any status and click Next. Select the protocol your devices are using and the device model being upgraded. Click Finish. This gives you a count of the number of registered devices of a particular type in your whole cluster. You can refine this search if needed. Enterprise 20 has device pools organized based on location and device type. For example, Toronto 7965 phones device pool and Winnipeg 8945 phones device pool. Device pools should always be organized by geographic location. If you can do this, you can easily find phones of a particular type at a particular location using a filter on device pool and a filter on device type. Now we open a maintenance window and shut down the production cluster. Shut down all subscribers first. SSH to each subscriber and invoke the Utils System Shutdown command. Shut down the publisher once the subscribers have shut down. SSH to the publisher and invoke the Utils System Shutdown command. 
If we need to roll back the cutover, we can restart the current production cluster beginning with the publisher, then the TFTP servers, and then the remaining subscribers. And finally, we promote the pre-production cluster. When we built the Jump Lab, we changed the Production Collab A and Production Collab B VLANs to an unused VLAN as a precaution. Now we'll change the Production Collab A and Production Collab B VLANs back to the correct values. Then we move the pre-production VMs to the Production VLANs. Correct the values of Production Collab A and Production Collab B. Select the server in inventory and on the configuration tab, Select Networking. Click Properties beside vSwitch 0 unless you have a QuaGig eCard, in which case you should select Properties beside vSwitch 1. On the Ports tab, select Production Collab A. Notice that the Production Collab A port group is in Unused VLAN 666. Click Edit. Correct the VLAN for Production Collab A port group and click OK. Enterprise 20 uses VLAN 203. Do the same for Production Collab B, VLAN 204. You need to do this on all ESXi hosts, Enterprise 20 ESXi A and Enterprise 20 ESXi B for Enterprise 20. Now we change the VNIC configuration of the VMs in the pre-production cluster to put them on the production network. Moving the VNIX to the Production Collab A and Production Collab B port groups will make these VMs live. Right click on Pub in the pre-production cluster. Change the network label to Production Collab A. Click OK. Pub is live now. Proceed quickly to move the subscribers to the Production Collab VLANs. The VMs in the pre-production cluster are now live. Enterprise 20 changed the name of the pre-production cluster to production. Enterprise 20 keeps the builds cluster as a lab cluster for ongoing testing and development. The BE6000 co-residency rules do not allow for Windows 2008 server to run on the box. For this case, you'll have to move the builds jump server off box. We'll inventory registered devices and do some tests to decide whether or not to go with the cutover. We will compare the number of registered devices before and after cutover to see how many devices did not re-register. We'll use this number to help with the go, no go decision. Enterprise 20 inventories registered devices before and after cutover to make the go, no go decision. Use RTMT to get the total number of registered devices. Use RTMT to get the number of registered devices of each type. Use phone find to look at devices in specific device pools. RTMT will need to be reinstalled. Cisco recommends that you verify phone functions after an upgrade by making the following types of calls. Voicemail, interoffice, mobile phone, local, national, international, and shared line. Cisco recommends that you test the following phone features after an upgrade. Conference, barge, transfer, see barge, ring on shared lines, do not disturb, privacy, presence, CTI call control, and busy lamp field. You can only test so much. Upgrading the phone loads in advance should ensure that most phone features will work following the upgrade. Based on your testing, you need to decide whether or not to move forward or roll back. Rolling back is simple. Shut down the 9.1.2 VMs in the new Production Cluster resource pool and start the older version Production Cluster servers. Once we cut over, we'll run the Enterprise License Manager upgrade utility. The license migration process has these basic steps. Register all unused product authorization keys, 
Packs, and install all pre-9.0 licenses in the production cluster before you upgrade to 9.x or higher. Run the License Count Utility, or LCU, Change Freeze, Upgrade, Complete Cutover, Run Enterprise License Manager Upgrade Utility, and request new licenses and license 9.1.2 or higher production cluster. When should I run the Enterprise License Manager Upgrade Utility? The Enterprise License Manager Upgrade Utility is run against the upgraded cluster. We put this in as part of Cutover. If you want the information sooner, then you can do a dry run of the upgrade to get this information in advance of your Cutover. For Enterprise 20, ELM is co-resident with the CUCM publisher. Navigate to https colon slash slash pub dot enterprise 20 dot ca slash elm dash admin. Log in using collab admin and your password. Navigate to inventory product instances. Notice there are no product instances. Click add. You add the cluster by adding the publisher. Use the platform administrator username and password. Click Test Connection. When the application successfully connects, then click OK and OK again. Select the radio button beside Enterprise 20 Toronto Cluster and click Synchronize Now. The synchronization should be successful. Navigate to License Management, License Planning. Click Migrate Licenses to Enterprise License Manager to migrate the older licenses. The Enterprise 20 version 7.1.3 lab cluster was unlicensed, so we cannot show you the remaining steps in the process. You can have a look at these steps here. We've successfully cut over to 9.1.2. Coming up next, Day 3, Exploit Cool New 9.1 Features. Thanks for watching.